Hey guys, it's John, welcome back. So today I thought I'd go over how I'm using the Plaid API with Django to pull in transactions for my bank accounts for this personal finance app that I've been working on over the weekends. I thought this would be interesting to give kind of a raw inside look at, I, I've talked about in the past, you know, getting to a working prototype as fast as possible. And so I thought it'd just be fun to give an unstructured raw walkthrough at what I'm working on right now, something that I learned while doing this recently. And maybe if you're interested in either the Plaid API, learning more about Django, or just learning more about how web apps work, um, that this would be somewhat interesting. So it's an experiment to give kind of this raw look at an unfinished app, uh, which by the way, it's really unfinished. Like, stuff is a mess. So, but this is a snapshot at my raw process. So let's get started. Um, I think the first thing that'd be interesting to kind of uh, walk through is what is the general Plaid flow? Like how do we interact with the Plaid API? How do we get things set up? So generally uh, I'm going to pull up this, this little illustration that Plaid uses on their docs. It's pretty helpful, but um, in the most basic sense, uh, uh, basically, the user, they try to connect with an app, um, which kind of the first action is, is they want to connect their, with their bank account. So they're gonna click some kind of button um, to do that. And in, in the way that Plaid fulfills this request is through the Plaid link user interface. And we're gonna interact with that in Django, but basically we make a request to create a link token. We get a link token from Plaid in order to use the link interface. Uh, along with that, if that link token is successfully created um, on the on success callback, uh, we take a public token that we got from the response and we exchange it for a private permanent access token, which we store in our database. And we use that access token in the future anytime that the user wants to connect to the Plaid API. Um, so uh, it kind of validates and authenticates the user's future request with Plaid to get transactions and account information and so on and so forth. So kind of the highest level object I would say it, for Plaid is the item, which is basically kind of a connection to uh, a certain bank. Um, and then with that item, you can get products like uh, accounts and transactions and so on and so forth. So. Uh, let's see what the code looks like here. First, the user would, would initiate this whole process by clicking this link account button. And uh, let's see what happens when they click that. Um, so we're gonna go to the actual uh, index.html view, uh, I'm sorry, template in Django. And we're gonna look for that button. So let's look for link account right here. And um, basically, when the user clicks this, we have an event listener that sh that looks for this ID link button. So let's see where that is um, down here. So we have a JavaScript that, uh, you know, we're getting the element by ID. So anytime that this link button is clicked, we have an on click event listener, which calls this function link token func. And I modified this from the plaid docs because originally they had this uh, anonymous function which initiated this uh, this API call to get a link token every time you every time the script was rendered so I just uh, decided to do wrap that so that way it was only called if uh, somebody clicked on this button so what is this uh, link token func okay so first we have uh, we've assigned this this function uh, fetch link token um, uh, and, and basically, we, we define this here in, in order to use it uh, in our configuration, which um, we're then going to pass down here to a link handler. Uh, and remember from earlier, the link is, is the way that is basically the Plaid user interface to let the client interact with their bank accounts and transactions. So we're passing these configs um, in order to create uh, a link handler and then open that UI. So let's look at the configs. Um, so once we actually are defining this and we're gonna say, you know, dot create configs. So the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna assign this key value pair uh, token to uh, the result of fetch link token. So whatever that returns. So let's see where that's defined, which basically um, we are assigning a HTTP response here, uh, turning it into JSON and then taking the link token from that and then assigning it uh, to our configs object. Um, so this is the first API call that we make here to the Plaid API endpoint. 
And we do that through a Django view, because uh, we need to perform some additional logic. And a Django view is basically just a Python function that takes in an HTTP request and returns an HTTP response. Um, so let's see what create link token looks like. And by the way, it's been a long time since I did like front end web, web development stuff. So if I'm like rusty on terminology, I have no pride in you correcting me in the comments. Uh, I would love to learn from you guys as much as you're learning from me, if at all. Um, and so let's, let's see where this is uh, defined and what logic we're performing here. So we're gonna go to our views. We're going to go to create link token right here. Um, if we are authenticated, we're going to create a, a data object or dictionary in Python. And we are going to pass that in our post request um, to the plaid API endpoint link slash token slash create. That's going to create the link token. We're going to assign it here to this key value pair, uh, which is our response. Um, we are then going to return a JSON response um, of that link token. Um, just gonna be this key value pair. So um, let's go back. All right, so we've gotten a token, we've assigned it here. On success, um, we're going to take the public token, it's a temporary token that, that Plaid gives us, um, and we're going to exchange that for a permanent access token, which from now on, whenever the, the user <laughs> or the loser is authenticated, they're going to use this access token to interact with their bank accounts through Plaid. Um, so if that succeeds, we're taking this temporary public token, we're gonna make our next API call to, I, I forget the exact uh, endpoint, but we'll see it in this view, I think. Um, but we're gonna use a Django view to handle this request um, in this API call to get the access token that we're gonna then save to the database. Um, it's gonna be a post request. We're gonna stringify the body uh, in a JSON format, and then we'll decode it in the view. Um, so let's go to views, and then, get, oh, we're already here, get access token. Um, if the user is authenticated, we're gonna decode the JSON. We're gonna take the public token from the body as well as uh, the accounts, um, relevant make accounts. Um, and then this is the exchange that takes place. So the exchange response is um, we're gonna, <clears throat> basically Plaid abstracts the exact endpoint. Um, we could look it up in the Plaid docs, they have a list of all the endpoints. It might be like link slash uh, tokens, access token slash get or link slash, I forget what it is, you can look it up. Um, so, but anyway, once we perform the exchange, we now have our access token. So we're gonna get that from the exchange response here. We're gonna get the item ID. And then um, if this item doesn't already exist, we're going to save it and create it, and then um, we'll save it to our database. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm also gonna go through all the accounts that we got in the response. And uh, as well, if a new account shows up for this item, we wanna save it so that way we have access to it in the future. Um, and then this is just some printing stuff uh, that I'm gonna get rid of for production. Um, and then that should uh, have given us an access token, which now we have it saved in our database, which uh, along with the item ID. Um, and that is, that's what we wanted. So um, we've done that, uh, so we've kind of fulfilled the purpose of that request. Um, okay, so going back here, if, if we for some reason fail, we have this on exit callback, which is gonna perform some error handling behavior. Okay, so that's a general view of kind of uh, the basic API calls to Plaid to create a new item, uh, save any new accounts to your database, save the access token to the database, so now the user is set up to get their transactions. Um, and then let's see how that happens. So um, here, basically, um, if the user clicks refresh transactions, which is basically like doing a get request for all the transactions, it's going to initiate an API call, uh, which we handle in a get transactions view in Django. Um, so let's take a look at that. Transactions. Um, okay. If the user is authenticated, uh, I'm going to get all the items that belongs to the user. Um, here I'm performing some logic to, uh, Plaid only basically allows, I think for most bank accounts, it can only go back 24 months. Um, so I'm specifying a time delta in weeks because I'm not sure if it actually accepts months as an argument. So I just did a little math here. And uh, I'm creating a start date and an end date for the API call that we're gonna do. Um, so we're gonna iterate through all the Plaid items that we've gotten here that belong to the user. Um, we are going to look for the access token and, um, 
In order to get, to get the transactions, we have to pass the client ID, the access token, the plaid secret, um, which is also in the plaid docs if you want to look at how that's kind of configured. Um, so here we make our call, we make a request um, to whatever endpoint uh, represents get transactions for plaid, uh, passing the access token along with the start date and the end date. Um, and then uh, we get a response, which is the transactions. And uh, this data object kind of proves the fact that this is very raw and or no, I haven't cleaned this up. So don't you definitely don't look to this as a model of clean code right now because I'm hacking, I'm trying to get something working. Um, but basically we don't need a lot of these, uh, basically we don't need a lot of these key value pairs in this data. For all we need for the endpoint um, right now is the access token, the start date, and the end date. Um, and once we get the response of transactions, uh, as along with the accounts, we're going to perform some logic to save those transactions and accounts. So here, if account doesn't exist, save it. So I believe that Plaid by default only gets the most recent 500 transactions. So in order to get all of the transactions, we make uh, our initial request up here. After we make our initial call, I'll just go through this while loop. And um, the condition here is going to be as long as the length of our transaction list is less than the number of total transactions, which is specified in the response to the get request we made. Um, we're just gonna continue making get requests for the next uh, uh, however many transactions, um, which, should, uh, which we're doing by creating this offset here. So it's basically saying the offset of wherever we left off, however large the transaction list is that we already have, we're gonna start there, get the next X number of transactions, which I think is like 100 uh, at a time. Um, and continuing to expand, extend the transactions list. Then we're, then we're gonna go and save every transaction that doesn't exist. And, and then we're just going to uh, return that as a, as a response. Um, and then quickly, uh, I'm gonna go over now kind of what this actually looks like as a user, and then uh, briefly how I kind of listed all the transactions. So now I'm gonna go through this process as a user and show you what it actually looks like. Um, so the first thing to do is we need to link an account. So we actually need to, you know, like we went through Plaid link, this is the first entry point to that flow. So I'm gonna click link account. The UI is gonna show up here, uh, continue. I'm gonna use Chase. I'm not gonna show you my credentials. Okay, great, so now we're connected. And this is another thing that I haven't updated yet. This should automatically populate and I should refresh this already um, on the UI, but um, I didn't do that yet. So instead I'm gonna have to do this manually. Just I'm gonna hit refresh accounts um, and then it should pull up the most recent balance. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna go to refresh transactions, which is gonna make a get request um, for all of the transactions. Um, so I'm gonna hit refresh transactions. It's gonna hit that same view that we went over earlier. Gonna continue to make get requests until we have all the transactions, which is probably gonna take a while. Um, but I'm gonna hit it anyway. And while we're waiting on the response to that request, um, I'm gonna show you how I set up the HTML template to kind of uh, display a list of transactions in table format. Um, so I'm gonna go to the transactions.html and um, basically here uh, I have a transactions uh, view uh, and then which, which actually loads this template and renders this template. And so as you can see here, I basically have a table as long as we have a transactions list um, I'm going to create a table, uh, create a header row to display kind of the titles of the columns that I want for the transactions. Um, and then since this is loaded, I might as well just show you what it looks like. Um, so let's go to all transactions. So as you can see here, this is our table. We have this first initial header row. Um, and then I'm iterating through every transaction in this page object, which is terrible variable name. Once again, another thing I'm gonna have to refine. Um, but I'm gonna iterate through um, all of the transactions that I got from this, this response. Um, and not even the response, like I actually, if, I've already, if I already have the transactions, uh, I'm just getting them from the database and, and saving them to a list, passing them here uh, through, into page obj, um, which is like the paginated version of, of the transaction page. Um, and then rendering one transaction or one row per transaction. So in this case, um, as you can see here, uh, each row has 
uh, you know, the transaction date, name, amount, category, and so on. Uh, so all I've done is iterating through those. And then um, I've paginated them, which um, just for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go over that. Um, but it's very simple. If you, if you just Google Django pagination, I pretty, I pretty much pulled this directly from the docs. And what that allows me to do at the very bottom is I can paginate um, uh, 100 transactions per page and then um, just click next to go to the next page, just like you're used to. Um, when I improve this UI, it's probably better to have like, you know, the pages numbered out one through 10 or something. So that way you can kind of jump around instead of just hitting next every time. But I think you get the basic idea. Um, so uh, this was basically a whirlwind of me just explaining to you uh, a high level overview of one aspect of this project that I've been working on lately. I don't have this down perfect, I'm still learning. So um, I thought I'd at least share what I learned, showed you, you know, what I did to get this working. Um, and hopefully this was helpful. Um, if there's any follow-up questions or you liked it or you didn't like it, um, definitely leave a comment below to let me know um, so that way I know, you know what's valuable to make for you guys in the future. Uh, and if you wanna keep up with more of these, please hit subscribe below. Would love to have you as a subscriber so that way I have a direct connection to just kind of uh, notify you whenever new videos come out. So thanks so much for spending your time checking out this tutorial. Not really even a tutorial, just a raw look at what I'm working on. And I will see you next time. All right, bye.